Thank you very much, Annette. Um, I'll also apologise for my voice as I'm still recovering from a, a flu from a Canberra conference um, a week or two ago, so apologies if I, if I cough. Thanks for that nice introduction, Annette. Um, Askham, I know I can see some familiar faces out there. Um, and for those of you I don't know, um, you know, welcome. I guess um, for those of you who also don't know a lot about Ascom, I'd like to put it in a bit of a context for you. So Ascom is 130 years old next year. That comes with a lot of advantages and also several disadvantages. We are a non-selective independent girls school located in the eastern suburbs. Um, we have students numbering around 1,200 from prep to year 12. We have 160 staff. We have over 2,000 um, parents. 120 of our students are boarders from country New South Wales. We are a non-selective school, as I said, and we utilise a, a teaching pedagogy or methodology called Dalton, which is very university-centric. It focuses on personal learning, um, access to personal content, and a lot of personal feedback from teachers. So it's actually a mixture of timetable classes as well as what we call studies. So even girls in year seven, for example, are able to go and sit one-on-one -on -one with a teacher um, and, and work at a very close level. So as a result, we have consistently high HSC results. We're a very academic school. We are a very established brand, particularly in the independent sector, and we have really strong waiting lists. So I arrived at ASCOM about three years ago, and I'm sure like many of us, when we arrive in new organisations, you know, I, I faced several, several challenges um, around uh, lots of legacy systems and, um, I guess, ageing hardware we had poor wireless coverage, we had um, inadequate internet, we had, like many organisations again, we had email overload, um, very paper-based, no real data management um, strategies at all, lots of issues around physical and network security, and absolutely no external access to any information that existed within the school. Um, so we, I was lucky in that I landed at Ascom at a time when they were had just started a rebranding process and I was fortunately able to influence that rebranding process to start to bring in that concept of a digital strategy and at the same time align that with a concept around an information strategy uh, and that was an interesting process. Um, we went through a very um, comprehensive um, vendor selection process and as Annette said we selected Elcom. It's been a three-year engagement with them now. It was a two-stage project. Our first aspect of that project was to build our public-facing website um, and I was fortunate enough to have a project manager assist me with that process. Unfortunately she left just before we started the second stage which was the build of the Ascom hub, um, so, which is our internal intranet. Um, so that process um, started, as I said, very shortly after the, the public site was finished and I think that building the public site gave us a great insight into where we were going to go in terms of the internet. We were, knew a lot of the functionality, we were comfortable with a lot of the functionality, we had an established relationship with Elcom and we had a lot of support um, from the staff there. And I have to say it has been a, an extremely positive experience for Ascom with Elcom, both in terms of um, the service delivery and also in terms of the support. So I want to just take you really briefly um, through I guess the three steps that we were involved in to build our intranet, the hub, um, and they were um, basically the brief, the process and the outcome. We had four very clear objectives in mind um, in, in terms of building that intranet. We wanted a single service um, a self-service, sorry, single point of truth. And I listened to, to Kate and I enjoyed her presentation about, you know, writing um, once but using it many times. And I think we can all relate to that concept of having huge amounts of data and information within our organisations, um, but not having a clear process or approach as to how that information, that data is disseminated. At Ascom, as I said, we run from prep to year 12 and whilst we're on one large campus, we have three separate schools and the schools were really operating, you know, as individual silos really. They were communicating, you know, in different ways, their policies were slightly different and certainly their processes were very different. So we were largely a paper-based organisation, like, like many, I guess. We had issues around version control, we had issues around accuracy, document and brand management. You know, I would be constantly amazed to see some piece of paper come across my desk thinking, 
where is the brand? You know, <laughs> it's someone's creative kind of um, effort, which was you know appreciated but not consistent with what the organisation or what the school was trying to promote. So our objective was to provide a self-service environment that was available anywhere and any time, which would streamline our communication, our collaboration, and our access to information for staff, for students and parents. We also had the objective of automating our many, many um, manual processes and providing opportunities, um, particularly for our staff and our parents, to increase our online self-service options. I also um, liked Kate's reference to the online, on-demand, real-time, anywhere and any device. I mean, it's something that drives all of us when we're looking at building either a, a public-facing website or an internal intranet like our hub. Um, the second um, main objective for us was really intuitive usability. We, for everybody, for all of our stakeholder groups, so for staff, students and parents, managing those obvious changes which come from taking an organisation from a purely paper-based, we had no digital strategy, we had no real online environment. So it was a massive change for the school and for many of our admin staff who were creating the content and publishing that content and photocopying it or emailing it, it was a massive change. So what was really critical for us was to have a system that was easy to learn, easy to use, um, repeatable processes, um, fantastic support and excellent training. And I have to say that for those of you who have, have had anything to do with Angela, um, you know, she, she's fantastic. I still have Angela coming in regularly to meet with me every term and there is still something every time that I learn from her, particularly as it relates to the specific needs of something I might be working on at the time. Um, the third one, obviously, and it's been spoken um, a lot by Kate and obviously George as well, was that seamless integration with the school's management system. And we're fortunate in that we do use Synergetic, which is a fairly popular system Australia-wide for independent schools. So in managing that massive amount of data that we have in Synergetic and being able to push and pull that information between our stakeholders, um, the Elcom CMS really provided us with a, a fantastic platform to do that. Um, we've been able to take away manual processes such as sending our parents a six-page medical form every January, blank, and asking them to fill the same information over and over again, bearing in mind that because of our, um, our location and, our, and the type of school we are, that many of our parents are, you know, CEOs and, you know, many of our mothers are very, you know, successful corporate, um, you know, women. So, to come into Askham and to find, you know, a six-page blank document being posted to you every January was certainly, I think, a challenge. So we had a lot of feedback from our, um, our parents, a very vocal group. We had a lot of feedback from our board, um, and I know there was a question earlier about getting buy-in, but we, we did have buy-in from the executive, we did have buy-in from the board, which meant that we were able to drive the, the development of the internet project quite quickly. Um, so we've been able to take the, um, we've been able to add on to Elcom, the CMS in terms of being able to do some exception reports. So the forms particularly and the workflow, I know Tim spoke about them earlier and the, the developments to the forms are very exciting. Um, it's, it, a lot of those elements are ones we've wanted for a long time. So for example, in a school, having an overarching consent form once, being able to send that as a, being able to send that out as a form being able to PDF that response and attach it against our document management system is just such a, you know, probably saves about, about 20 steps. So in terms of medical information now, we're able to push that medical information out of Synergetic into our hub, into the Elcom CMS. Parents can update that online and we can, they can submit that, that back to the school. We do validate that before that goes back into our database. So certainly seamless integration, um, you know, really being able to unlock that information that is in Synergetic because there is just so much of it. The fourth thing, um, again, was obviously easy to custom design and easy to evolve. We knew that our intranet, the hub, was going to start small. We knew because where we were coming from, we knew we had to start in small steps, but we knew that also that it was going to grow very quickly, which it has. So the hub's been live for staff now for two years. We launched it, we gave ourselves about a month or two in between launching it to um, staff first, then to students, and then to parents. Um, so the, the custom design was important for us. The ability for us to be able to have the hub as the central source 
of information, the central place um, for all of our stakeholders to go, was really critical. So we're actually literally in the process at the moment of um, implementing the SAML connector from ELCOM, and we work with um, Kevin from StudentNet and use a product called Cloudworks for our single sign-on. So, you know, I'm much more open now to bringing in a third-party um, systems and products because we have single sign-on. The school's recently gone with a company called ComplySpace, which manages all of our governance and our compliance. And so staff are able to just, you know, click on that link within our intranet and go straight out to ComplySpace. The girls are able to, the girls and the academic staff are able to go directly to Canvas, which is our learning management system. And our parents are able to go directly to our synergetic um, parent-teacher interviews, all from the hub. And that was our key objective, to have one place where people knew all of our information existed, whether or not they actually stay in the hub or whether or not they go out to a third-party system. It doesn't matter because there is the one place that they visit. Um, in terms of the process, because I think the product is so flexible and because we had had that experience in building the website, um, we did a lot of work around wireframes, we did a lot of work around project charters and project scopes. We spent a lot of time um, having stakeholder meetings, particularly with those people we knew you know, would, would want to have input into it. So we met with our parent groups, we met with our board, we met with our teachers, we met with our students, and we met with our parents. We had small focus groups where we were able to find out what it was that those people were looking for in terms of an intranet. And obviously we can't and still can't give them everything they want, but we certainly are able to show them a roadmap, and that roadmap is often based on the feedback we have from from ELCOM in terms of where they're heading. So whilst the school might be really keen to have that PDF option in the forms and the saving option in the forms, to be able to tell them that that's coming in version 10, you know, has always been really, um, I think, quite... gives ELCOM a lot of credibility and I think gives the school a lot of confidence in the product. Um, the production environment's been really important for us and, and, I mean, I know it's a standard for those who work in IT, but for us to be able to to put everything into that production environment before it goes live, to test it, to trial it. We've got the SAML connector going in there tomorrow. Um, that's certainly been a, a, a huge benefit for us to make sure that what, when we roll it out, you know, everything, everything works. We've had, we've had virtually no downtime with the hub. Um, we've had um, a couple of planned outages, which we've informed people about, um, and, and obviously we've tried to make those, you know, in, in outside of business hours, although there's probably no such thing these days, is there? Um, I did mention before that the Elcom support is excellent, and, and I have to say that the help desk particularly, you know, I think it's Jim and, and Luke, and I'm sure there's some others, I don't want to sort of name people, but they're brilliant. I mean, we, we log a... The way the support works with Elcom is they have a site, a reference site, we log a job, probably within 10 minutes or 15 minutes we receive a response back, and we've never had to wait you know, more than, I don't know, probably half an hour for, for something that we're asking. It's often not a problem. It's often actually a question from me or something that I need help with. But they're an extremely responsive um, group to work with and it's certainly made my job and my life a lot easier. In terms of um, the outcome, I think um, we... We really wanted to have a highly connected community. We really wanted to have easy access to relevant and accurate information, and we really wanted to have reduced email and increased efficiency. And it really facilitated the process across the school. I've worked really closely with the whole of admin, starting at executive and working down, to um, really streamline a, a lot of processes that were repetitive before. And what's been... I'm going to show you in a minute as long as the wireless is working. I'm going to show you in a minute what we've actually managed to create. I know. Um, but what has been, I think, really um, exciting for me to see the people who are coming out of the school now, so the admin people who come to me, who, who want a presence of their own, and which is great. So it's very hard in my role to be able to see every process within the school. It's really hard for me to see every manual process or every piece of information. And so I've met with admin a lot, and I think the rebranding process helped that in terms of at least managing documents and, and magazines and brochures. But I've tried to work really closely with the admin team so that we can give them an opportunity for them to come to me and say, look, I want, I want a space. I want to have this information available for parents or for staff. And certainly that's worked really well um, for us. The rate of adoption has been really high. It, it did take a little while. I'm not going to stand up here and say that it was an, an easy process. Change management never is. 
but we tried to provide support. We tried to provide a lot of training. Um, we tried to provide hands-on training. I would sit one-on-one -on -one with people um, for hours on end, and I think the outcome from that has been really positive. There are still challenges, and there always will be challenges, um, and we, I don't think any of us are realistic if we, if we think there aren't going to be. Um, but we've got, our, uh, we've got a lot of content available now for our staff and students and parents. We've got our um, newsletter, which is built within the CMS. As I said, we use, we use the workflow, which is just brilliant, and, and the forms extensively. So we've basically gone from a paper-based organisation now to virtually paperless, particularly with our parents. Um, we still have a lot of emails, you know, um, but what I'm noticing now is instead of an email going out saying, here's a PDF with an attachment, the email will actually go out saying, this particular document is on the hub. And you know, every time I see that email, you know, it, um, I have a smile on my face. So as I watch that change process happen, you know, it's really very um, encouraging. And even the diehards, even those who were, you know, dare I say it, somewhat negative to start with, really can see you know, the benefit of having all of the data in the school accessible in the one place. Um, version control around it, the ability to push-pull information from Synergetic. So I think in terms of, um, you know, what we set out to achieve, um, we've certainly got there. We had a really very clear requirements list, and I think, you know, which is why I guess Elcom in, was selected as our um, CMS. We, we use the document areas significantly. The embedded, embedded articles and the dynamic widgets are really useful features. The interactive calendars, and not just for our main calendar, we'll use a calendar, for example, on a sport page. So we have our um, tennis courts, our swimming pool and other sporting facilities that are all booked using one of the calendars. We'll have a calendar on the IT resources page where all of our iPad sets can be booked. So the calendars are very um, flexible um, piece of functionality to use. Obviously links and, and notices. Um, the expiry dates on notices and articles is excellent because we force, well, we encourage our um, admin staff to put the expiry date on, which means we're not dealing with obsolete and out-of-date content. The notice goes up, it expires a week later or six months later, when whatever is relevant, um, and what we're left with is very relevant content, um, which we've had a lot of feedback from parents. Our other goal, I think, was instead of instead of sort of flooding all parents across prep to year 12 with information that was really irrelevant, we're now able to target a notice just to year seven or just to year 12 or just to staff or just to parents or just to students. So the ability to streamline that information that we're pushing out has really been um, a big advantage for us as well. As I said, our, newslet our newsletter is online. The reports that you can get back on those forms are fantastic. You know, they come back as a, um, you know, Excel spreadsheet and it, it provides a lot of flexibility for our admin staff who then might have to work on you know, an extra step in doing that. Um, the synchronised data from Synergetic is, is excellent and obviously the connector is now going to mean that we won't have to do so much of the work ourselves that we'll be able to use um, this new functionality. As I said, the vendor support is great. Um, we have virtual staff rooms um, and we also use the workflow a lot. So that was basically from our scoping meetings that they were our requirements. As I said, the project was, you know, um, quite short, I think, in terms of the time we were able to turn it around. Um, we used wireframes a lot to put that back to executive and board level to get sign-off and buy-in to make sure that people knew exactly what they were going to get. So we didn't launch it and it was going to be, oh, but I, you know, I didn't want that or but I did want that. So the wireframes were certainly a big part of, I think, getting us closer to our overall objective. Um, you know, the, the wireframe and the, the eventual um, page is actually quite remarkably close, even though there was probably about a year um, in between those two processes happening. Um, so I think, you know, in summary, I am just going to jump onto the hub and show you a few of the features. But in summary, I think what's great about it, and I think, you know, we can all see it here this morning, is that we get provided with you know, lots of new and innovative ways to engage with our community and our stakeholders. Um, we, we really have changed significantly in, in a period of two years, the way which we communicate with our um, parents and our staff and our students. Um, we've got a long way to go, um, but there's been a significant change um, in the culture and the attitude towards a digital strategy in an online environment within the school. 
as I said before, it's automated many, many of our manual processes. And I think this is just why the admin people have jumped on board, because they can go, wow, you know, instead of having to receive back 150 responses, you know, from a year group, they send it out as an online form, they get an Excel spreadsheet. We've actually built an extra step to that, which they actually then get to see who hasn't responded um, automatically. So, you know, that they, it has saved them, you know, many hours in time. I think it's also really changed the way we handle our data from the creation to the dissemination to the consolidation and, and then back to the reporting. It really has become um, the central location for us in how we distribute, gather, store and transfer our information. Um, my details um, are up there. Our homepage, our landing page looks like this. Um, oh, so you can see on our login page we have a forgotten password, <coughs> forgotten password option for parents and we also have a forgotten password for staff and students. So I'll just try and move this a bit. Um, so you can see that um, from the landing page we have our e-news. I'll just jump through to a few of these um, areas and I hope it won't be too slow. So this was built obviously you know, using the CMS. Um, the marketing people were very much involved with this. This, was, this wasn't so much um, things that we did. You can see that we've got a whole lot of areas along here um, and these are, de these are discrete areas that, that are owned by various people around the school. Um, in terms of admin, just to give you an example of the sort of data that we are bringing in from Sidengetic, you know, all of these email addresses are live. It's particularly handy for new staff coming in. Um, this information is all um, pulled from Synergetic and it's live, so any changes made in the Synergetic database are automatically reflected. Everything within the hub has a fantastic search option. Um, I know I've talked a little bit about the forms. And you can see that um, our leave application form is in workflow. So it's very simple, um, but it's basically selecting the leave. Depending on who your manager is in that workflow basket, once you hit submit and fill in the information, it just goes, continues to go straight through. All of the forms that we use at ASCOM um, that require workflow, such as all of our events are in workflow, so the form will actually have a section for IT if they need to book a um, you know, projector or a laptop or an iPad, it comes to us, it goes to the kitchen, it goes to maintenance, you know, it's all done and very seamless. I liked the fact that Tim said that we'll now be able to approve or reject that workflow in an email rather than having to then go into the back end of the workflow. It'll certainly save people such as heads of department, not so bad for us because we're in there all the time, but certainly for managers and heads of department to be able to do it from that email um, will be much faster. Yes, so it goes through about four steps. So it comes to the immediate manager for approval, whether it's leave, whether it's professional development. Uh, goes to the immediate manager for approval. So if it's approved by the immediate manager, it then goes on to um, finance and it also then goes on to our um, section in the admin who manages PD and, you know, so it's, it's, the, the data is recorded. It doesn't happen automatically at the moment, but one of, the, one of our current projects, our current many projects that we're looking at is a lot of workflow around accounts payable and payroll and other things. So there's certainly the potential to be able to do that. Um, we have a, a separate help desk system, um, which is not going to show up today, but I, I just wanted to show you a, a few different types of um, the editors that are available. This particular one's called e, the eFox editor, and so we are able to put basically anything that exists in IT at ASCOM is on this section. So new staff can go in, I want to change my password, um, they can have a look. I want to know about network drives, I want to be able to log in from home, I want to be able to put my voicemail, anything like that. And these, um, these sections here are eFox and are very handy. Excellent. Um, so what I, I mentioned before, what I have really loved is that the people who've come to me and, and seen the potential for instead of emailing between groups of people and having information on, you know, one of the network drives, they've come to me and they've said, I really want to develop a, um, an area on the hub. And so this is a, a good example of three teachers who work in our learning enhancement. So again, we've used eFox here to just summarise that information. They can go in and they can have a look at it. Um, they can actually um, have a look at which students um, are involved. Um, and they can also then link through um, to the form, which is the learning um, enhancements referral form. So now instead of having a piece of paper floating around the school um, that 
first of all, the staff member has to know where it's located to find it. Then they have to fill it in, probably photocopy it for their department um, manager and then send it in. Everything's done here and it's done through workflow. So what, what has been exciting for me over the last year particularly, and probably really even the last six months, is the number of people that have come with fantastic ideas about um, developing areas, developing discrete areas of information um, to assist people. As I said, our, our policies um, is now, we're now with Comply Space, but we, once, once staff click on that, they can go straight through. I'll probably just have a quick look at, um, I've logged in on this other tab as a, a senior school parent, and I'm not going to sort of go between the tabs at the moment, um, just because I'm a bit worried about um, the wireless. But you can see that for a parent, um, every piece of information that they need, which is very similar for staff, is now on the hub. So they have information about their daughters here. So full medical information, full timetable, um, all of the student notices that we put up on the student hub. Um, they have um, the ability to change any of that medical information. They have a list of their daughter's absences. They have a list of their daughter's academic reports, which we still do twice a year as a PDF. So there are current and archive versions of the academic report available um, for parents. They have information about themselves, so we really encourage them um, to keep those details up to date, emergency contact details um, as well. The APA, which is our parents association, have an area on the hub where they can put up their agendas and their, you know, whatever information they want. The activities and events are um, a complete list for year seven for all of the, the term that they're in. Any form that is attached to that particular date in the term is there. So it's all in the one place and that stays up for the entire term. So par parents really love that feature. Parent notices, as I said, depending on which, which year group you're in, you, it can just be a year 10 or a year 11. So parents aren't getting overloaded with information that really isn't relevant for them. The parent directory uh, down here, again, pulls information on class lists, and obviously there's a whole lot of privacy issues around that, so we have a system within that section, within the actual um, parent details, where they actually have to tick um, to say, yes, they're happy for their details um, to be pulled in, and that's automated from Synergetic. There's a flag in Synergetic, and it just puts all of the parents who've agreed to that into that parent contact list. So the parents can just jump straight in, they can view it online, they can PDF it, they can do whatever they like with it. Fee statements as well, takes them through to the, the Westpac Quick Web, which is where the um, parents pay those exorbitant fees. Um, and in a, in a real live environment, you would see the, all of the statements for, we give four term statements, and you would see their associated receipts as well. So really every piece of information um, that they need, um, particularly resources, they have a lot of forms um, in their section. Oh, I said I wasn't gonna do that. Oh, thank you. Um, so it's, it knows I'm trying to um, pretend to be a parent, so it's jumped back to me. But as I said, all of the information for parents um, is available in forms and in workflow. Um, we still have a lot of PDFs up there. We still try to have a lot of information that's in line rather than as a PDF, so it's just a one click. Um, and we've had a lot of good feedback um, from the parents we meet I meet regularly with the APA um, to make sure that you know they have opportunities to continue to to develop the content that goes in there for parents um, so I probably will stop there um, does anybody have any questions or I hope I've been able to show you just very quickly how customizable it is how flexible it is how much information you can pull in from whichever you know database you are using, but um, as I said, we, we are two years into our journey and um, we've still got a long way to go, but we're excited by the changes that are coming. Yeah, we, we've got a programmer, a .NET programmer at ASCOM, so we've, we've done that ourselves and um, it'll be interesting once, the, once we have a look at the connector to see how much of that will remain and how much you know, we'll move over to the connector for. So, but it wasn't a huge, it wasn't huge amounts of work for him and I think it's been in place for two years so I feel that whatever effort he's put in, you know, for the last two years we've got good value out of, so. But I think one of the great things about the product is that, you know, if you do change and if you do evolve and if you do decide to go in a slightly different direction, it doesn't mean that you're, you're having to stop and, you know, really remove a lot of the work that you've done, you can just continue on.
It was so needed. It, it, as I said, it did take a good probably six months for staff because they were so used to just email. Email, you know, was everything. Our girls obviously love it, and they've got quite a few discrete areas of their own in terms of um, social justice and other areas. So we find the more engagement and in involvement they have in it, the greater it grows for the students. Um, but you know, I think the biggest. I think the biggest advantage for the admin staff is is that example I used where you know they would have you know word processed a, a letter they would have you know a, probably PDF'd it and emailed it to 112 parents and had some sort of response coming back in now it's a form you know we can put a content editor in and a form together the parents are happy because they get a really comprehensive response of their you know of that back but our staff love the fact that it's just saves them so much time I don't think any of them quite know what they do with their spare time that they've saved, but um, I'm sure they're finding other, other ways to do it. But it, it certainly, um, I think it's those staff on the ground that are working in the product that are um, really the champions for it that I've tried to work really closely with. Absolutely. We, we, we do, we're very careful with what we give them access to. So for example, that example I showed you with the professional learning, you know, there are three teachers who I wouldn't say were particularly up there with technology and it did take them probably six or seven sessions with me of just, you know, putting up the content and putting up the form. But once they got it, you know, they got it, they happily go in there now and, and edit it. But we do try to minim keep, I guess, to a minimal what they can edit. So we're not giving them, you know, access to, if they want more menu items or submenus, then we add those. Um, it's, it's an interesting question. I think we, we sent one email out from the head of school and we, we highlighted, excuse me, we highlighted what we, what we thought were the advantages and I, I heard Kate say you've got to be careful to make sure that you're also listening to what those parents want. Um, and we've certainly given them a lot of opportunity to, to give us feedback. We've got a couple of parents who really don't like it, who want to be emailed every day about what they're supposed to do. Um, so we've just worked away <coughs> silently at that. But we, we got the Parents Association in, so we have a rep for every year group from prep to 12. I got them in and did a demonstration to them. They loved it. They were very involved in then pushing it out and you know, doing some PR on it to their parents in their year group. But we virtually got to the point with forms within, I think our deadline was, we launched it in October of 2013, and our deadline was term one, so February, no more paper forms. So really, and we warned them, you know, and, and this time, this year, it was no more emails. So we will still send the odd email if it's a, um, something urgent or something that is quite, um, that is affecting the whole school, but largely, we communicate to them at orientation day and as they come in as a future parent, we can communicate them at parent-teacher interviews. Any opportunity that we have the parents on site, we tell them that the expectation of the school is that the hub is the central location for all information, for all forms, for handbooks, for policies, you know, for contact information. They have that staff directory as well, um, so they can actually put a face to a name if they don't know what their daughter's English teacher looks like. So we have had to be a little bit you know, probably one of the biggest issues, I think, was um, those staff who just kept on, you know, sending emails and, and, and not following that process. But I've, I've had a lot of support recently in, in that um, from the head of school and executive, and, and those processes have been redefined and communicated. And I think it's, it does take time, but it certainly has been successful. Thank you. Thank you.